Political analyst Dr. Somatota Figen is joining us now via Skype to unpack yesterday's constitutional court hearings on the application for a secret ballot during a vote of no confidence in the president. Well, uh, Dr. Figeni, uh, good, good morning. I just want to start off by asking you overall in your view, uh, let's just start there. How do you think the opposition parties uh, made their case yesterday in the court? Do you think they made uh, points which would convince a constitutional court uh, to grant their application? Well, I do think that they made a compelling case because the constitutional court would have been wary in the current environment of anything that looks like judicial overreach. But in so saying, they were saying that the Constitutional Court simply should con confirm that the Speaker is not, uh, you know, the person who doesn't have the discretion to invoke secret ballot. And they begin to compare the logic of using the same when you appoint a president to say it could be extended for the same similar reasons uh, when you are actually having any kind of a vote of no confidence. So to that extent, I think they are making a compelling case, and that compelling case could even make the Constitutional Court think of the intent of using secret ballot when you appoint a president, because the same logic would apply when you have a vote of no confidence. Very interestingly, of course, that matter of judicial overreach. about it. Do you think the judiciary will feel the pressure uh, politically? I doubt it will feel the pressure politically, but it will also be very cautious not to play into the space where they could be seen as overreaching. But what they could simply say is to confirm that the speaker actually has such powers, and either way, if the speaker decides, ought to be on a rational basis that are logical and defensible and even consultative. Uh, in that case, they will not have taken the role. They will throw it back to the speaker and it will create such, uh, you know, pressure on the speaker. Of course, the case in Devon, which seemed to have invoked that particular march, though it's linked to many other cases because of late government and the ANC has been losing quite a number of cases, the one of forcing the president to reveal the reasons for appointing a minister, that one I think is a borderline case. One would think that the judge would have done well if he just confined himself to the reasons provided or alleged to have been provided on the spy report as to whether this is true or not, so that you say wrong reasons or reasons which may not be rational may have been used. All other reasons, including the president, simply saying, I no longer feel comfortable working with this minister, period. And then uh, the members would have been accepting that. But the dramatic manner it was done to recall a minister when he had been granted by the president to travel abroad on such an important occasion. And... with a lawyer making what we think it was like a startling yet coded revelation that members of the judiciary are facing unspecified threats. I mean, it was like a throwaway comment in yesterday's court hearing where he suggested that judges could be facing dangers more serious than the risk of losing uh, their jobs for taking unpopular decisions. I just want us to pause and I'm hoping you can hear that exchange and I'm just going to ask uh, our colleagues in the gallery just to play it for us for a second. Let's just take a listen. Judges take the position 
to serve the public, to serve justice, and take an oath. But we accept that uh, they are human beings, and in order for them to give unpopular decisions, they need security. And that is why the Constitution guarantees judicial independence by providing security of tenure. So that sitting as justices, the, you are enabled to make decisions that you would otherwise not make had you not enjoyed their protection. That uh, and I say so with great respect. Well, <laughs> no. That presupposes that the only danger out, out there is being removed from your position. No, 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 not so. <laughs> there, there are more serious dangers, believe you me. There are more serious dangers, believe you me, than just being removed from your position. Are we reading too much into this throwaway line, or are they really facing serious threats as a judiciary or pressures, Dr. Figeni? There is no doubt the recent uh, uh, stealing of computers uh, just the hard drives, not the monitors, and also some of the uh, cases or anecdotes of threats to the judges suggest that at this particular point, the threat may just be more than the security of tenure. There may be a number of other things, whether it's blackmailing them or even the physical threat. That's why this throwaway comment should not be taken lightly because it is revealing what is in the minds of the judges. Even though they try to say they will be independent, I think the political pressure is increasing at this moment. And you may also be looking at how the ruling party has been interfacing with the judiciary, at times calling it counter-revolutionary, or at times simply saying that they are not transformed. And that in itself has added the political pressure now let's come back to the motion itself. If, I'm just un, I'm, um, I'm overemphasizing here, if uh, uh, after this, uh, the, the, the court has found that uh, there is, of course, uh, a, a secret ballot can take place, but it's, of course, in the hands of the Speaker, and if the debate happens in Parliament, and if it's successful, we know that the, the, the outcome of a successful no-confidence debate in the President's uh, leadership is far uh, reaching than just one individual because according to the constitution a particular clause is very clear if the president is removed through a vote of no confidence his cabinet and the deputies must go we're talking about plus minus 70 people because you've got about 35 cabinet ministers and about 37 deputy ministers and they will be happy the, the implications are far reaching than just one individual that we could be faced with uh, dr figen Certainly. In fact, that would not be the case if the ruling party was not as divided because they would simply move on to the next person and say reconstitute the cabinet. But the reality here is that ANC is deeply divided, factionalized, and even the new appointees or those who were retained were questioned by the very members of the ANC to say if the reasons of efficiency, effectiveness were used why certain ministers would have been around. So that in itself means you would have a serious battle even within the ANC as to who then is reappointed as the president and who would be in that cabinet when that president has to constitute or reconstitute the cabinet. That is where the threat comes. It could even go along factional lines, which means purging may also take place. It's a possibility. Thank you very much for your insights as always, political analyst Dr. Soma Dota Figeni.